Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Archana and I'm a homeschooling mom of two boys aged eight and three. So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about five tips for a successful homeschool day. Um, now this is again a collaboration with Abby from Rooted and Rest and Jessica from The Waldock Way who are hosting a monthly show and tell series to highlight the uniqueness of homeschooling. So be sure to check out all the other videos in the playlist that I will link in the description box below. So before I talk to you about five tips for a successful homeschooling day, I want to preface this by saying that the amount of time that we as homeschooling parents spend in an academic designated space doing actual worksheets and academic work is minuscule compared to the amount of time that we spend with our kids just doing life or, you know, being a parent, right? So I think that um, if you want to have a successful homeschooling career, it's important to focus on ourselves, on our self-care, on our learning, and also on our relationship with our kids. So I think this is sort of the foundation to having a successful homeschooling career and a successful homeschooling day, that our relationships with our kids is of utmost importance. And having said that, here are my five tips. My number one tip for a good homeschooling day is to start ahead. Now this looks different for different people. Some moms really like to wake up very early in the morning, go for a run, get their workout in, get their bodies moving, do their daily devotionals. And some moms need to have a very detailed plan in action, right? And as far as I'm concerned, when I have done a little bit of meal prep, I'm a much more relaxed homeschooler. And now in my house, healthy eating is a very big priority and lunch Lunch happens to be the most important meal. We sort of keep our peanut butter sandwiches for dinner. So I do insist on cooking my lunches. So if when I have my chopped veggies or something simmering away in the Instant Pot, I'm a much more relaxed homeschooler. Now, I don't have a very, very detailed daily plan and academic goal as far as, um, you know, our actual schoolwork is concerned. But I do follow a curriculum. So we just end up doing the next thing on the next day and have Having a broad monthly and weekly goal gives me some sort of focus and direction. So my tip would be to start ahead and whatever you need to do to sharpen your saw so that you can show up in the best way possible during that time frame within which you're homeschooling your kid, you need to go ahead and do that. If you need some amount of physical exercise, some amount of mental planning, some amount of spiritual, um, you know, some alone spiritual time that, that will actually make you an effective person that helps you show up in a better way, you need to just go ahead and do that. So the first tip is actually to sharpen your own saw, to fill your own bucket before you can show up as a homeschooling parent for your child. My second tip is to be fully present with your child during the time that you're homeschooling. So even if your child is uh, working on something independently, like the pages of his math, math workbook or um, language arts, you just lending your presence by just sitting there without using your cell phone or even indulging in some sort of harmless activity like folding laundry, it speaks volumes to your child. You're not just counting the minutes until he will be done just so that you can check um, check it off your planner. You're not just waiting for him to look the other way so you can whip out your phone and look in your social media accounts. You're just sitting there holding space for your child, right? So this teaches him that he matters, that his work matters, that he doesn't have to rush through it. He can enjoy and savor every bit of it, even if it's something as mundane as handwriting or copy work. All of it is, um, uh, you know, sort of a veiled lesson of paying attention. Your child is learning, um, you know, presence and um, the lesson of paying attention because you have given him undivided attention. And this, in my opinion, is the basis of several other lessons to follow. If you want your child to listen to you completely without interrupting you in the middle, you have to give him, give him attention first. If you want your child to think of the other man's point of view before rattling off, 
off his own um, views and preferences gift of attention is most important of course i mean if you're if you're teaching multiple kids that um, that that changes the um, the dynamic a little bit but if you're just teaching one or two kids or one kid independently at a time just sitting there holding space for him until he's completed his work right without um you know giving him sending him these vibes of hurriedness just kind of take a deep breath and give him the gift of your presence is a very 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 valuable lesson that i've learned in my four years homeschooling my kid my third tip is to just sort of switch out the sequence of your curricula every few weeks or every few months just so your kid doesn't feel like he's on this endless um you know boring hamster wheel of homeschooling right so um julie bogart i think she speaks of enchantment and magic in everyday homeschool which in my honest opinion is very difficult to achieve i mean magic and enchantment does happen in homeschooling probably more so than in public schooling because we have the time and the space to provide that for our children but on an everyday basis and consistently um you know that magic happening in home school is very difficult and just lighting a candle is definitely um you know it will definitely set the mood but magic is just not going to happen by uh, you know just by lighting a candle but definitely by changing out the scope and sequence of your um child's curricula every few weeks or every few um months definitely is going to help shift things a little bit I'll give let me give you an example. For instance, math can be accomplished in many ways, right? So we know that a child has to be learning multiplication, addition with regrouping, a little bit of algebra, a little bit of geometry within the 3rd and the 4th grade. So every single day doesn't have to be a boring worksheet oriented math day. right so two days out of five can be allocated for actual workbooks right and one day could be a math game day that you know you could uh, reinforce the same concepts but use a game instead and the third day could be a math story day where your child gets to make up stories either write the stories down or to just narrate the stories um, um just to make sure that he understands the concepts right and to make it fun right to put in his favorite characters to just sort of build a plot um just a math story day and the fifth day could be a math in real life day baking cooking measuring the angles of your house measuring the areas of your house or even just collecting all the coins in the house and uh, counting them and then going over to the grocery store and putting them in the coin star machine all of it is integrating everyday uh math into your math curriculum so switching it out a little bit of course as a homeschooling mother this requires a little bit of planning and preparation but this definitely pays off because it removes the aspect of boredom and monotony from everyday homeschool Another way to break the monotony of everyday routine homeschooling is to indulge in a little bit of child-led learning, right? What is your child's interest as of that particular week? How can you enrich and nurture it? Will a trip to the library or watching a documentary help him feel listened to, help him feel um feel heard and um you know, help him give him some agency in his own education? These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves, right? because what is the point of home educating if we are just recreating school at home so i think constantly asking ourselves am i listening to what my child wants to know wants to learn this at this particular time constantly being aware and cognizant of our children's um current interests and learning styles and somehow integrating them into our everyday home school can really break the monotony. For instance, in my house, my son is a little bit of a science buff and he is a kitchen science experiment enthusiast. So we have a basic kitchen supplies, right? Like this big bottle of vinegar from Costco, some baking soda, some rubbing alcohol, some food coloring, and other just basic harmless chemicals that he can just work with um by himself. And whenever, you know, we have we are facing a little rut in our home school, he will just go spend an hour by himself and, you know, work on acid base 
reactions and this is what interests him as of now these may change now the this is easier to do in the younger years than in the later years because you know the later years um i guess there's more stuff to do but again nothing breaks the monotony than giving your child a little bit of control and agency and autonomy in his or her own education My fourth tip is to schedule the techie part of your homeschool after the book work is done. So um, this may not be relevant for all homeschooling families, but generally in my home, I've seen this with my son, that when he enjoys an online lesson or, um, you know, does anything online before his actual book work has been completed, it is very difficult for him to refocus and to shift his mind's attention from the very stimulating world of online activity back into, you know, book work and reading books. So in our house, we usually schedule online lessons or research time or even watching documentaries after his math and his language arts and you know science work or even reading has been completed so if your child enjoys some amount of media time either entertainment or gaming or even educational every single day it's wiser to schedule it after his book work his actual book work is um, completed My last tip, my fifth tip is um, just for you to remember that if you are having a bad homeschool day, that if, you're ha if your kid is unwilling to learn and if your kid is consistently behind in one particular concept or subject or is putting up an attitude, it does not reflect badly on you as a homeschooling parent, as an instructor, and it does not reflect badly on your child. Your child is allowed to have bad days. And even in public school, children have good and bad days. They're just sitting in the corner and, uh, you know, sort of being a fly on the wall. But that doesn't mean that they're not having bad days and we as parents we have good days and bad days why must we expect our children to be academic champions and to perform impeccably every single day that's just not fair so constantly listening to our children not the active you know listening to what he's saying but listening to what he or she is not saying right those gaps between the sentences listening to those awkward silences all of that is very very important so my last and final tip is uh, to remember to just relax right and put the relationship first because when we do that the academic success follows automatically and homeschooling success if we want to define it in terms of academic achievement, that will also follow very um, easily. So I hope you liked this video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to check out all of the other videos in the playlist. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll be back with another video really soon. Bye-bye. Are you sitting right here? Why don't you take a video? <laughs> He's just sitting right here. Why don't you take a video of me solving this? Solving one side of it? Did you solve it? Yeah, I solved one yellow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna solve one color. Bye guys. guys. This is a Rubik's brand out, and I'm gonna solve one side. Ready, set, here it goes. Ready, ready.